So you want to be left alone in your house, in your apartment. You don't want anybody to disturb you. You don't want the outside forces to uh, change your way of life. Well, it's funny because your home and your apartment depends on all outside forces to exist. The electricity that comes to your house comes from outside. The water, the gas, garbage collection, food, everything comes from outside. Your clothes, everything, unless you're 100 percent self-sufficient which some people are right but uh, usually you have to go to the rural areas for that kind of thing but basically we're dependent on everybody on everything even your income right you say i want to be left alone but your income relies heavily on someone buying your product or service or if you own a business you uh, depend on the productivity of your uh, work and your employees and people still buying your product and service. Where, wherever you are, whether you're self-employed, whether you're just a little um, a little guy or a little person on the street selling uh, pencils, or you're high up in the billionaire, in the trillionaire world, right? Which people, those people tend to forget that they're put there because other people have put them there, have bought there. It's not just, success is not just I'm smart and this is what I've done. It's also the fact that people buy the ticket to your product or service, right? So we're heavily dependent on one on, on one another, right? And this is very important. Now in the in the monk life, in the Buddhist life, the Buddha, when he created the Sangha, uh, made it very clear that he didn't want monks to be 100% totally self-sufficient. He created a system where monks and lay people have an interdependence on each other and this is for good reason it has many reasons and I think I'll do another video and go deep into that maybe maybe I'm not going to promise but it's common sense because uh, a monk just living alone and not having any contact with the outside world is not good for the mind right? having contact with others is beneficial for a lot of reasons it also keeps you in check and uh, keeps you uh, kind of uh, up to date with where you're at in your in your in your practice in your thoughts or what you're thinking and also in society it's good to have harmony and unity now the old cliche uh, united we stand divided we fall it's an old one it seems to be worn out but it's it's still apt today right so I want to talk about something right we you know, I keep forgetting every video to do a little bit um, on war, on war, and how how terribly tragic it is, but also how much of a failure it is—a failure of our society to come together and uh, yield tolerance and harmony and compassion for one another. You see, you consider the herd of bulls, right, or a herd of buffalo out in the wild, right? So when the predators come, the, the young male buffaloes, the strongest ones of the pack, tend to form a line, right? And so the predators are too smart for that. The predators will keep seeking the young and the old, right? They'll seek the, the young buffalo or the old buffalo, the one that can't defend themselves. And then they'll jump on that, per, on, on that vulnerable uh, animal and they'll devour it. And there's nothing much, you know, sometimes the, you know, the wall works, you know, the, the buffalo wall or when they, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes they get payback, but not often. It's like a young antelope or a young deer, an infant deer. It's vulnerable. It wants to be left alone too, but the predators don't really care. They seem to uh, seek the young and vulnerable. Predators seek the young and vulnerable. And this is why when wars happen, all the young men of age go to war and leave behind the old and young. Okay? They leave behind the vulnerable. So are they really protecting their country? Who's behind the education of our young people? Like this world is turned upside down, as you all know, right now. So many things are happening. And, uh, and, and our education system is teaching kids sexuality rather than how to be a good person, how to live a moral life, 
how to how to grow up and have success in the moral way, in the honest way, and have and develop good virtues and knowledge and wisdom and be a strong person in that way and protect the young, protect the old, you know, have responsibilities towards the community in developing good relations in the local community, the, the regional community, the national community, between other countries. But we don't have that. As soon as people go to war, what, our countries go to war going to fight, there's always cheerleaders on the side. And we forget that there's predators, predators out there who make a lot of money from war and make a lot of money from uh, predation, being predators. And we have that. Now, one thing that's happening for sure is they want to make uh, sexual relations with children legal. Right? This is predatory behavior. Okay? So, I want to be left alone doesn't cut it, right? It doesn't cut it. Not even in Buddhism. When we're talking about mental seclusion or physical seclusion, we're talking about directing the mind to knowledge and wisdom. We're not just talking about being left alone so we can sit on our couch or watch TV. That doesn't happen. Even your TV depends on an outside source, right? Even your TV. And did you make your own couch, right? And what I'm getting at is that there is a, a certain level of understanding that we need to develop that we need to be out there and if your community is suffering what are you doing about it you know so many people have come to me in these last few years and asked me about these things and what does buddhism do do we sit back and be quiet no we develop okay we be creative we be intelligent I said this on uh, my private videos um, i did a private video on buddhist cafe oh talking about buddhist cafe Please don't forget to uh, subscribe. Once you subscribe, you can request membership. It's no cost. And you can join in the conversation there. You can join some groups. You can create your own group. Uh, you can write uh, some articles to the community. Uh, you can donate to help us grow. We have a, a right now we're running a, a fundraising just for $300 to cover the year's internet costs. If you would like to donate to that, please visit Buddhist.cafe and help out. Also, on this channel um, and my BitChute channel, uh, please subscribe and either like or dislike because it's motivating. It, it, it sends me a message and tells me if I'm um, answering the right questions and, and not saying the right things because that's not what I'm worried about or what I'm thinking about. What I'm thinking about is, is this message getting received? Are people appreciating this message or wanting these messages that I in, that, that I'm sharing uh, from time to time here on YouTube and BitChute. So on Buddhist Cafe we're trying to develop, as I was saying, <clears throat> we need to develop things. Now Buddhist Cafe for example is my attempt and some uh, supporters, some friends of mine, uh, our attempt to create some staunch Buddhism in this world. For some reason uh, Marxist ideology or Talmud ideology is starting to enter Buddhism. You know, the authority of Buddhism is the Dharma and Vinaya. The teacher is the Buddha. That's it. There's no other teacher in Buddhism. And, and the Buddha declared that the Dharma and Vinaya, the, which is the discipline, is the authority. Yet what we're getting is we're getting outside institutions which come from backgrounds that are not Buddhist trying to tell Buddhists how to behave and how we should be. Now we can let that happen and but and do nothing about it and just let Buddhism get whitewashed. Well, you know, we're not going to do that. Okay, so Buddhist Cafe and other things that I'm doing, I'm not going to say everything here on YouTube and Bitchu, obviously. I'm going to keep some things to myself. But you know, what are you doing uh, to help the situation uh, in your local area? Where do you vote with your dollar? You know, do you, do you support uh, organizations which just promote division, which promote constant division and race baiting and race hustling and sexuality? Like sexu why has sexuality become such a big deal? And if you're a Buddhist, you should know the, the fourth precept um, is, you know, abstain from sexual misconduct. And when you take the eight precepts, it's abstain from all sexual activity. So in Buddhism... We're going in the direction of mind has no identity. 
mind has no identity. Remember, pure citta, pure citta is anatta. It's anatta, it's not self, right? Yet all these identity politics and all these things are doing nothing but causing division in our society. Are you comfortable out there speaking your mind or are you scared you're going to get cancelled or whipped? You know, this is thought control, okay? Thought control, all right? Telling you what you can say, what you can't say. Now, I will say, right speech and respectful speech goes a long, long way, right? And I, I did a video on the gossips, on the problem with gossip, right? You can see that's called the gossip contagion, right? So in terms of going a long way in your speech, see, free speech, for example, in America, for some reason we uh, in Australia and other Western countries, we keep trans transplanting what's happening in America into our countries rather than looking at what's happening in our countries specifically, right? But in terms of free speech, that is talking freely to a government official who is an elect or an elected representative or in public, the public land. In terms of private, in terms of people's homes, in terms of private businesses, free speech does not apply. It, it, it never has, right? So I'm, what I'm saying is common knowledge. and A lot of people are saying it already on YouTube. It's not, I'm not saying any reinventing the wheel here. But right speech the right speech, as I've spoken about many, many times, is always skillful. It always works. It always works to a, to a good result. And silence. Right speech, if not right speech, silence. Right? So we abstain from false speech, deceptive speech, harsh speech, idle speech, and gossip speech. Right? Now, these are things we can do with one another to create unity. Unity is what we need when the predators come, okay? Because the predators, the first people they're going to go after is the young and the old. And we saw that with COVID. We saw that in the lockdowns. Where, where were people standing up? Well, people were standing up. People were trying. But there was not enough support. There was not enough pushback, right? In the Australian Constitution, for example, right, it's illegal to enforce a medical procedure on a person without their full consent, Right? But what the government has done is create what's called mandates, which are not even, they're not even legal. And the courts are proving that. How many people got fined be because they didn't follow the mandates, right? Many people got fined and the people that stood firm went to court and a lot of these fines got thrown out because they're against the constitution. This is how we develop a civil society, by following the, law the right laws and, but in Buddhism, which is even higher up in the in the echelon of virtue, we're talking about because legalities don't mean much because it's it's legal to gamble, okay? It's legal to gamble, so that doesn't <clears throat> and many other things that I've talked about before. But the moral law, right? The storm, the the moral precepts will take you to a more virtuous life, right? And it will help you to do, become stronger, develop more. Uh, I guess, more, uh, more compassion and more goodwill for yourself and others. And this is important. What's happening today is we've got nothing but <clears throat> a domination. It's like the animal world. It's like the hyenas versus the lions <clears throat> versus the, do the wild dogs versus the leopards. That's what's happening today in the human world. We've got nothing but division and, and uh, uh, everybody's scared to say what they want to say. Um, the truth has been discarded. The, the truth and facts, uh, accurate information has been thrown out in order to appease, right? This is not the right way to go, people. This is not, this is not going to end well. <clears throat> you know, in Russia and uh, Ukraine, America, China, they're all talking about nuclear war. They're talking about, and nobody, nobody in the, in the Western world is standing up and going to the UN and going to, NATO and all these kind of things and demanding, slamming their hands down and say, where are the talks for peace? Where are the talks for peace? Why do we keep arming and say, why? Because it's profitable and, there are pe and there's predators out there who profit and want things out of this, right? Want illegitimate things and evil things out there. So in order for a, for a Buddhist to prosper in this world, now our future generations depend on us. 
remember the Buddha sacrificed a lot right the Buddha sacrificed a lot so did the Savaka Arahants <clears throat> and and when India was taken over by the Turkish Muslims the Buddhists did so much they fled to other countries to preserve and they brought as much teachings as possible today we benefit from that all right so that's talking about Buddhism but in a country water clean water clean food shelter right right to happiness right to work right to live freely right to live freely and peacefully are things we need to uphold okay we need to fight for those things not in a violent manner because violence does not like for example an eye for an eye i was thinking about that the other day <clears throat> an eye for an eye okay so let's do a uh, an example person a's father was murdered by person b okay so person a decides well you kill my father an eye for an eye i'm going to kill you so then a relative finds out oh this you, you killed my relative, I'm going to kill one of your relatives. So instead of just having one person um, be murdered from, a, from you know, a tragic situation, four people get murdered. This eye for an eye doesn't make any sense. Okay? It doesn't come from Buddhism at all. The idea is to, is, is, is to stop. What did the Buddha tell Angulimala? Stop. Stop unwholesome deeds. Stop unwholesome actions right so this is what we're missing as a community develop cultivate virtue now in a society we cannot be left alone right in a society if we don't cultivate and develop virtuous things and i'm saying virtuous businesses virtuous networks things that create uh prosperity in the world <clears throat> that lead to clean water and food for all, clothes for all, an equal chance for everybody to have an opportunity to feed themselves, their family and their loved ones, protections of the young and old. If we don't develop and cultivate these things as a society, whether lay people and monks, and monks are included in this, because you think being a monk, okay, I'm living in the forest, well, if there's a war happening five kilometers down the road, what, well, I'm gonna sit here and pretend it's not happening? I might have to flee okay so we're all in this together yeah you know, the sangha is not uh, <clears throat> uh, sitting isolated from the world it, it, that's not how it works we're de completely dependent on the generosity of the world in a lot of ways we are so if we don't speak up and start doing and people depend on the sangha to develop cultivate the path and bring merit Right, so if you don't understand this clearly, and if it, if you're new to this, and it sounds a little bit <clears throat> hard to accept, or a bit blasé, or a bit vague, or a bit uh, what's called uh, what's that word? Uh, never mind. Uh, <clears throat> a bit out there. Read the Buddhist teachings, and as far as other people, other institutions coming into Buddhism, a lot of them have not studied the monastic code and the uh, the Dharma, the teachings of Buddha in depth. Now, I must say, uh, in the Western world, there are monks who have offshoot and started their own thing um, and developed their own things. I can't speak on them, and I don't want to shoot at people, right? The idea is not to boycott. I was listening to a wise person today saying, the idea is not to boycott and create more hate in the world. The idea is to, is to do more wholesome things and support people that do wholesome things. So when you see something that's wholesome, make some sacrifices and get behind it, right? <clears throat> in, in your local, particularly in your local community, right? Particularly in your local community. When you see people doing the right thing, get behind them. When you see people, you know, mum and pop store trying to survive because, the, you know, corporations, you know, in Australia, Woolworths and Coles just running all the little fruit and veggie, fruit and veggie and, and other products out of business completely because they keep buying in bulk and uh, the prices and all this kind of thing don't let it happen you see it's up to us society is us right our children their children's children if we don't think of them and as in future generations if we just 
you know, throw all caution to the wind, what kind of world did they inherit? Okay, they will be enslaved even more so than what we are today, right? Because again, the predator goes for the young and the, the young and the elderly, all right? That's their first attack. If they're not around, then they will, will attempt to hit the bulls, right? To hit the stronger people. But usually, like an old teacher said, when, an, when a nation is strong, there are no enemies. Okay, so the, the path of Buddhism comprises of developing wholesome actions, uh, comprises of doing the right thing in the community as well, being responsible, uh, you know, promoting virtuous things, promoting wholesome things, developing, cultivating wholesome and virtuous things. I know it's repetitive, right? But rep repetition is, in, is big in Buddhism, like chanting over and over again, practicing meditation over and over again, meditation walking over and over and over again. You know, Buddhism is a, is a lot like that, right, where we repeat with, because it's a practice, right? It's no different from practicing an instrument. If you're on a uh, guitar, for example, you know, the, practicing the basics brings you to the advanced, right? If your basics and fundamentals are not in place, you cannot create much of a, you can't build much, you know, much on top of that. Okay, so basics and fundamentals are everything really in, in everything we do. Because when, 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 when uh, trouble hits the fan, I tell you, you'll run to basics. For example, if there's a fire in the house, you'll run out of the house. Basic, to save your life. You're not going to sit there and, and think that you're, you're just going to get your loved ones or, or yourself out of that place, right? Because when things get go to trouble, usually we revert back to our primary instincts or fundamental instincts. We don't get complicated when there's real trouble. You see it in the forest. You know, even with kids who have never seen a snake before, when they see a snake, they'll step back. They're not going to go and pat it. They're going to be really careful usually. You know, and there are some kids who, who grab, who try to grab, but, you know, they will learn. They will learn the hard way, right? So either learn, but the, your basic instincts will cause you to uh, go to safety, uh, whatever the situation is. So that's basic behavior, okay? So I think uh, when I'm, this whole video, I, you know, I was trying to get at is, you know, first of all, the precepts, right? First of all, correct understanding. The mind has no identity. Pure chitta is pure wisdom. There's no identity. The five aggregates don't apply, right? The five aggregates, the body, right? It's no self. So understand this, okay? And understand this in terms of, your interactions with other people, right? So, of course, there's a lot of ignorant doctrines out there and doctrines that do create divisions, doctrines that go as far as calling other people animals and cattle and and dogs and uh, it's okay to lie. Um, and, and I'm talking about the Talmud, right? So, you know, the goyim, the goyim thing, where goyim is, is actually, uh, when translated, actually means animal, cattle. Right, and so anyone who's not following the Talmud or in that uh, practice is is an animal. Right now, this now come on, how are you supposed to create peace with a philosophy like that when your mind is imbued to seeing everybody as an animal and you're you're better than that? Come on, just come on, right? We're better than this. What we've come to today is this problem of self. We've not stopped. And how to look okay so if you are you know if you're wondering you know this video my channel might very well get deleted or uh, you know I'm, I'm not monetized so I'm not worried about that but because I'm sp I've spoken the forbidden things right as you all know uh, this might get deleted I don't care I just don't care right like it doesn't I'm it, nothing's I don't fear right I'm very there's peace inside of me truth is truth okay and if your mind is imbued in seeing other people as like an animal or or, or or it's okay to lie and cheat certain people and not others and this and that. Your, your mind state is is terrible. It will never lead you to peace and harmony within yourself. It will never lead you to anatta or liberation. Okay, you, you, you've got the wrong view here. So, you know, as Buddhists, we need to get right view, but we also understand how to live in this world. 
okay it's not just about going to work get, getting your little paycheck and then hiding in your house you're going to be surrounded you're going to be you're, you're ready. look what happened in COVID. it was that easy to just stop you from going to work and doing whatever you wanted to do it was that easy that's how vulnerable we are okay remember that throughout time in positions of power there's always been predatory behavior it's up to the peasant class <laughs> not that's just a bit of a joke that comes from my Italian upbringing listening to my uncles and fathers right but but basically uh, my father and my uncles talking about it's basically up to us the people to stay united not divided and to uphold the right way of life and support people instead of boycotting and creating more hate go and support the people go and build things that are good build build a bank that's not going to charge a lot of interest and fees and take advantage and just profit off everybody. Build a financial institution. Create a, a school that's not involved with all this Marxist dribble and all this stuff that's teaching kids about sexuality and making it such a thing rather than teaching kids to be good people, hardworking, to give back to society, to be caring for the, for the, for the vulnerable and weak. These kind of things. You know, go to the council, speak up become a council member, create change. These are the things that are necessary for a civil society to flourish and prosper, okay? And it is part of Buddhist practice as well, as a layperson particularly, because you're living in that environment. It's like if I was living in a temple and I refused to clean every day or maintain things, right? And I just threw rubbish everywhere uh, because I just felt like it. That's not, a lot of people sooner or later will not come to this temple and this temple will be a waste of donation funds won't it all right so this rule you we need to take care of our environment just as much as we need to take care of our, our chitta right so we need to stop out there and stop in here now that's real leaving me alone that's stopping that's the real definition of i want to be left alone but you can't live in this world and expect to just escape to your mansion or your little apartment or wherever even a cave even a cave you cannot escape from society, even a cave. You've got to eat. You've got to come out at some point. You need things, right? So it's some, we're all dependent on each other. And this is the message that is not getting pushed out there. What is getting pushed is this group against this group, that group against this group, and all this division and philosophies and doctrines that cause nothing but hate and so superiority complex, inferiority complex, and equality, equality in the sense that we, we all have mind. We all have, we're, all in, we're, we're a human within humans. It's there by default. But for some reason, we're thinking of differently. For what reason? Because it's because of ignorant doctrines. Okay, if you want to come to Buddhism, educate yourself and in, in, in strengthen yourself, empower yourself with knowledge and wisdom, and understand you know, there's, there's no identity in the pure citta. The five aggregates pass away. They're impermanent, right? So, the, so, so, why are we fighting? Why? Because people, there's there's ignorant dogmas out there. So there's ignorant doctrines, and there's just evil. Evil exists, right? There's evil things out there. So instead of supporting the evil things, support the wholesome things, right? Dedicate your life to supporting wholesome things wherever they are, in your local community, regional, state. You see a good channel like mine, right? You support it. You if on you know, Buddhist cafe, for example. Now, again, this is not, you do what you like. You consider what you like. It's not a spiel, right? I'm not trying to sell anything here. We're just, we're trying to create a place to protect Buddhism and make sure the teaching stays within the, the parallels of what it should be, okay? In the fact that no outside institution is stronger or has authority over the Dharma and Vinaya. And no outside institution is the teacher of Buddhism other than the Lord Buddha. So I hope that uh, this message uh, doesn't rile your feathers too much. You know, um, if you were offended by anything I said, please put it in the comments because I'm interested uh, what, you know, w what offended you. I, I, I want to know because I'm not shooting at anybody, right? I, the, the target here is to how to create a better society for ourselves. We cannot be on our own, whether we want to or whether we like it or not. 
okay whether we like it or not we're dependent on so many things um, as human beings okay every yeah uh, in fact i would say totally dependent right if, if you factor in work and the fact that someone has to pay your income or buy your service and you're totally dependent on other people you know to to live okay to put food on the table for yourself and others so for some reason why you know why is division occurring because division is not going to help us hate's not going to help us in any way it's not going to create prosperity the predators know this they know this right because they're just after the profits for themselves right so as buddhists we need to show the way like the buddha showed the way the buddha didn't go out you know <clears throat> looking for people like uh, witch hunters no led by example right he taught peaceful things he did virtuous things you know he created the sangha he taught a lot of people he taught a lot of people he he did many virtuous things and the sangha and the lay people like uh the famous anatha pindika right look at all the things he did you know i would say it's one of the reasons why the uh the buddhist sangha has survived is because of people like anatha pandika pindika right even the poor person on the side of the road when I go arms around who puts just a little bit of rice in my bowl, sometimes that comes in handy when there's not much food around, right? So sometimes it's even doing little that does a lot, right? That little bit that you do every day does a lot. So every, all of us, I understand all of us, are on. we all have different capabilities. But don't use that as an excuse not to do things, not to do things. Okay, so... You know, money is an issue, and we need money to do things, okay? Uh, unless we in invent a different system, it is like this. So in order to build things, donations are important in a lot of ways. So I have no shame in saying, please donate to help Buddhist Cafe growing, right? So, I mean, these kind of things, I think, are common sense, right? So like I said, as you know, like I said, if I've offended you, if you've taken offense to anything I've said, whatever uh, whatever I said, please put it in the comments so I can uh, uh, reflect on it. I'm not apologizing right now. I'm not apologizing because I don't, I don't, in my heart, I mean, in my mind as I'm reflecting even now, I don't think I've said anything offensive to anybody. However, like I said, I'm one person. I don't know everybody. And it's, if you're offended or if you're not offended, please give me some feedback. That helps. Remember, liking the videos helps, subscribing helps. Uh, it helps grow everything that we're doing. And I'm saying where because it's me and you, the layperson. It's what we're doing to uphold Buddhism and make sure the teaching is correct, not just for ourselves, but for our children and for future generations. We must think this way in order to create a better world. This is how civil society works. Please reflect on this deeply.